Hey everyone, good morning and welcome in. My name is Marlene and I am with The Room to Bloom and I am on the road. So um, this morning I was getting ready and I was thinking about two things. <laughs> One, being kind of hungry and um, you know, I don't very often run and pick something up uh, for breakfast, but I was kind of thinking about it. But I also was thinking about things that I've been experiencing in the last few days and you know for a while that it's all connected but <clears throat> and you know the thought that came to me was the idea of like thinking about you know how when we go through a drive through generally we're picking up something that fills a need right of like the need of hunger but what about if um, there was a drive through called worries away or cast your cares away right and you drove through there and before you know at the order window where you normally order food you pick up um, paper and you know there might be different categories and, and the categories could be um, you know they could be broken down to the four main bodies uh, the emotional body the physical body the spiritual body and the mental body right and then under each of those bodies, there could be categories for what is going on that you are experiencing that you would like to um, release. And so I wanted, I, you know, originally I was kind of thinking about when we think of something or a situation as a problem, right? We want to, one, work through our problems, right? But sometimes we avoid our problems, right? because we don't want to face our problems or deal with our problems. And so, and oftentimes we just wish our problems would go away, but let's turn our problems into lessons. Okay. That's the first thing. And when we look at lessons, like just imagine you're going to college or whatever, right? And you've been studying. Life is our study, right? You've been studying. You've been getting all these you know, pop, pop tests, right? Uh, pop quizzes throughout life. And now the bigger test is coming up, right? And anyway, so let's just say you've got these things on your mind and now you can drive through, you can pick what body, um, what is the, however you want to look at it, problem or the, um, test that you are going through and write it down. And you just pull up and you're like, I'd like to just pass this over, right? Instead of receiving something at the drive through window, you actually give it to someone, right? And imagine that at that window, it's God, right? God is at that window because God lives in every single one of us, right? The spark of the divine lives within us. And so we are casting our cares upon God. And so it's like, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna give this away. I'm gonna let whatever this is go, which is generally the emotions. It doesn't mean that a situation is going away, um, hurt or pain. I mean, this is what we're wanting to let go of, right? But sorry about the phone here, but <clears throat> But again, we're going through the drive-thru and we, uh, you know, for some people it might be the phys physical body, right? That they want to cast away pain or ailments of the physical body. For others, it is emotional pain um, or suffering. Um, for others, it is mental uh, anguish that someone might be going through. And um, others, it might be the spiritual right so and and think about how many times when we go through a drive-through we place different orders or sometimes we have our favorite things right so at a certain place we always get a certain something right so we might go to one place and cast our <clears throat> worry upon a restaurant certain or you know I'm using restaurant interesting when you look at that word rest <laughs> you want to rest from your worries right rest from your worries so you just drive through different places and you leave different worries at different places right 
And eventually, let's say that those worries are sitting there and eventually you're, you're starting to feel freer because you have given them up. You have cast them upon God to help you get through it. You have driven through the drive through of faith, right? Um, and, you know, here's the interesting thing. Faith isn't just at a drive through though. Faith is something that is with us all the time. But we cast our cares away, and then we're given a ticket, right? That's a receipt that says, here's, here's your receipt, and saying you have faith, right? You have faith in God, you have faith in the divine, faith in divine timing, faith in angels and guides, and I'm full of goosebumps. I'm actually really moved as I'm, you know, speaking on this, because how many times haven't we just wanted to you know, wish our worries away, right? So this is kind of what I'm talking about. So the first thing is, is, you know, imagine that you pulled up there and you're like, hmm, you have a lot of things on your mind. In fact, so many that writing them out would seem overwhelming to do in line because now everyone else is waiting behind you, right? <laughs> so, so this is about asking you to take some time to really sit with the self and say, what, what is it that I've been carrying around? What are my concerns, my worries? What is affecting my mental body? What's affecting my mental health? What is affecting my physical health, my spiritual health, and my emotional health? And break those down. And, and um, this is not about pointing fingers at others, although it does take time to learn and understand that because we definitely feel like, well, if this situation wasn't going on, I would be in peace. But we have to remember that we are spirits that are having a human experience, and we came here to evolve our soul. And the way to evolve our soul is to learn lessons. So when we start to look at it, that the person or a situation that's been really challenging you or that has challenged you in your life has actually been... Uh, the person maybe has been the greatest teacher. A situation has been your most, um, like the toughest test, right? Or whatever that's been. And you can oftentimes, when we have space in between that, you know how they say time heals wounds, right? All wounds. Well, there's a lot of things that happen in our human experience with time. We start not focusing on it so much anymore. We start to pick ourselves up and to heal from things that we've experienced, right? So that's how time heals because we start to actually start letting go of the pain and that's how time heals. And it takes time to let go. It takes practice to learn how to let go of the pain. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> that was a construction person standing by on the road. Um, it takes practice, though, to learn how to let go of the pain. But we do have to face it. We, If we don't face it or work through it or acknowledge it, first we have to know what it is. So when we sit with ourselves, we can really ask ourselves, where is the pain that I'm carrying around? What is that? I mean, we can feel really befuddled in our life and not really be able to pinpoint it unless we're sit with ourselves and go, where is this coming from? What is the, the real cause of my current stuff, right? Okay, that's current. Or let's also talk about, you can currently have a trigger that keeps coming up and you don't understand why you feel a certain way at a certain time. Sorry about the lighting here. But um, you don't understand why you feel a certain way at a certain time or around a certain person or being at a certain place or scents that come up like smells and stuff why that triggers you well these are triggers that are happening in the present moment to help you to get to process stuff that was in the past right that's what a trigger is right you hear people talk about post-traumatic stress syndrome um, something comes up and it just brings back a flood of emotion and then you you might not know what is going on why are you feeling like that you're just out of sorts 
um, I've noticed the past few days I've been like I I've, I've felt angry and I did a short on this last night and I didn't say what emotion it was but that's the truth I've like felt frustrated because um, I know that I'm being tested but I'm being tested in a way that is um, well it, you know it, it all creates um, different types of pain right where is the pain going what are we doing with it but the thing is is that I I really had to sit with myself and go, yeah, I realize that I am feeling anger. Anger can turn into bitterness, right? And, um, but I'm letting that go. It's like, I, I, I've got to let it go. In fact, years ago, I had that going on where I was just so frustrated. And part of that was because I was trying to control the narrative of a situation where really it was between God and this person. Um, you know, um, and yet I felt like it was my responsibility to get the situation under control, right? And so it gets back to that. Am I, am I trying to control? What am I trying to control? Am I letting life lead me? Or am I just saying, I'm giving this to God. I'm going to the, the, the castaways drive through to the you know, leave a worry drive through to the faith drive through, right? And I'm just, I'm just going to trust that uh, God is showing me this for a reason. And even though I might not be able to see all of it right now, that I'm given little bits at a time and I'm showing what I need to know in that time, right? Um, and so oftentimes we want the whole answer right away. But the whole answer might come in overwhelming more than we're ready to handle, right? Because again, God doesn't give us more than we can handle. So, um, you know, in our society today, especially in America, everything is quick and we want everything now, right? So this is first in building our relationship with God, we are being taught patience, right? And yesterday I did a reading and uploaded it and that was the first card that came out. We are being taught patience. We are being taught humility. Because just because we think some other people should be a certain way, right? And they should live up to our expectations, right? See, I've learned this a long time ago. And yet, there are still things, if you see someone who's really struggling with stuff, and you're trying to figure out how to help them, and it seems like, well, whatever it is that I'm doing, you ask yourself, is this helping? Is it working? Right? <laughs> um, and then when you feel like it isn't working, that's when anger can come up. Or is anything I'm saying getting through? Is anything being heard? Is anything, do they care? Do, you know what I mean? And so there's all these things that can run through your mind. And then what happens? You end up frustrated. And frustration can turn into anger. So it takes practice to understand. Yeah, I guess I've been feeling that. In the video that I did last night in the short, I was speaking about asking yourself, what have you been carrying around emotionally? So in an example, um, so let's say every time you're getting ready for work, you recognize that you're very sad. Like every time. Like you can hardly get yourself to go there, right? And you're only going for the paycheck, right? It's not a job that you're passionate about, excited about, whatever, right? Okay, so you first have to recognize that you're feeling that day after day after day. And then eventually something happens, right? Where you say, I just, I just need to make a change. It's hard to make a change though when you are feeling so incredibly sad. So that's where sometimes if you simply have faith in God, right? You have faith that there is a plan for you and your life that will fulfill you, that will bring you joy and happiness. And not only just for you, but for others and for the highest and best of all, right? So then you let go of the job. You trust that things are going to work out, whatever that means, even if that means that you might move. Even if that means, you know, you might meet, if you move, you might meet 
a, a new friend and you have this great interest and then this thing that you used to like to do but you haven't made time for because of your job all of a sudden this person likes to do that and the next thing you know you're doing that again and your joy starts increasing and when your joy starts increasing you start attracting money easily right and like so all these things start unfolding for you easily because you are not living and embodying sad you're choosing to get in front of that and say you know i i just have to choose something different i have to choose me over finances i have to choose my connection with god which lives within me right i have to get my soul i want my soul all is well with my soul and when i feel that um, anytime we are feeling discontentment or out of sorts or frustrated, this is when we really want to sit with the self and say, where is this coming from? What is the depth of this? And what shifts and or changes do I need to make to get everything in alignment again with myself or my soul? So I'm going under a lot of trees. I'm sorry about this, but uh, there's construction. I had to take a different route. Um, so again, just sitting with the self, asking where you're at, where, what are you carrying? So in that example, I gave the, the work example. Um, for some people, they go to work and it's like, woo, this is what I do. This is what I love. But then they come home and it's like they're not super excited about getting home, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that it is a person at home, although it could be. It could be a relationship challenge right it could be so much responsibility that it's like I don't like I don't get to come home like people might feel like oh I wish I could just go home and relax right but that's not it it's more like they might feel like okay so now I have to take care of the lawn and now I have to you know do everything with the house and if they're working 50 hours a week and have you know an hour drive every direction you can become very overwhelmed and very exhausted very fast and you feel like home is in a place of peace home starts to feel like a place of extra work right and so this is looking at the whole situation and asking what steps do I need to take to bring more balance into my life right part of that answer might be moving into a town home where when you get home you don't have to do outside stuff as an example. Part of that might be, I'm gonna downsize the house a little bit, right? Um, part of that might might look like, you know, there, there's just so many different things about what it, what is the discontentment when you're going home, right? Where do you, where will making shifts in your life help? Now I realize when you are more than one person and you've got either, you know, a spouse or, or a family or whatever there is more to consider but I'm going to tell you nothing ever gets done without your thoughts first so you first have to really think about what it is that um, that is setting you a discontentment and you know the other person the other spouse or whatever might be you know what I've been feeling the same way but haven't wanted to say anything because I know you love this home right or maybe maybe all that work is actually causing stress on a relationship right and so it might look like that it might look like um, working less hours and just talking with your job people sometimes say oh no that'll never work out but unless you first think it and say I need to go there and tell them I actually do enjoy my job but I have to figure out a way to bring my hours down and reclaim myself because my whole life isn't about work. But it definitely is about having God in your life and about balancing your life, finding balance within your life, right? And it's about recognizing the, the spark of God within, right? And honoring that. And so like our body is the temple, right? That holds you know, that God resides in, right? And so, um, you know, even taking small steps to uh, re-energize your energy. And if, you ha if you've been coming home and you're so tired every day, right? 
you don't have a lot of energy maybe for exercising or getting out. So what would it look like if you were working five to 10 hours a week less, right? Now you can start taking care of your temple. You could look at downsizing your home, like doing, doing all of it even, right? To reclaim you and your life. So there's lots of people that, um, you know, like it's simplifying, right? Simplifying life. Because if you have a lot of stuff around, that is indicative of what your mind is feeling like. And now if you have a lot of kids, their mind is starting to feel like that too, right? So the more you can simplify life, keep it simple, clear the clutter, all of a sudden you start having more enriching conversations. You start getting to the heart of it, of what's going on, instead of covering it up with stuff to do, stuff to clean up, stuff to move around, stuff to buy, you know, stuff, 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 right? Um, but, you know, so that is my encouragement today. If you were to go through a drive through that took your cares and worries away, what would you write down? And can you recognize them and give it time and take time and thank God, thank angels and guides for helping you to work through, to release and process that which is no longer serving you, which can be those heavy emotions, the pain, the hurt, the regret, the fear, the shame, right? Letting that go. And then like go through the drive through let that go, and then imagine yourself driving to somewhere that brings you great joy, right? Doing something like that. So then start leaning into what brings you joy. The more you lean into that, the happier you are. Your vibration goes up and you continue to attract more and more of that. Anyway, I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.